your job is to, over time, desensitize yourself. Desensitize yourself from the fear of missing out and the fear of failure. The failure of choosing the trade to be in that you're trying to hold on to for a longer run. I'm going to tell you the secret of what causes that and how do you overcome it. There's a couple things you have to know about. But once you understand these things, you will know exactly when to take those types of trades. You will not fumble it. You won't second guess it. You'll just, you'll know. This is the thing that I should be doing. This is not the thing I should be doing. The first thing that you have to understand is that you have to have a higher time frame draw on liquidity. I'm conditioning you to look at that higher time frame draw. Because if you don't consider that, Understand this, how are you ever going to trust these intraday fluctuations and think to yourself that I'm going to hold for a 100 handle run? Can a 100 handle run be birthed, manifest itself in a range that has already moved, say, several hundred handles down and really close in terms of proximity to a higher time frame draw on liquidity? And it's the last day of the week. Does it have the potential to move another hand, a hundred handles beyond that target? I mean, sure it can, but if it's more likely that it's only going to go to where we have set our attention to, some fair value gap, some old low where liquidity is, why would you, on that particular time of day, expect your trade? to somehow rub you the right way, and now you think it's going to be a big runner. So there has to be some frame of reference, which is exactly why I take everybody to a weekly chart. That weekly candlestick, what's it likely to reach for? And if we don't know what it is on the weekend before trading starts, we use Monday to ascertain what that information is. And you work throughout the entirety of the week to see where it is it's reaching for. It doesn't have to be the weekly chart. I just prefer to teach my students to focus there. But if it's not clear, then you must at least, at the very minimum, have some idea on a daily chart. What is it reaching for? And also, you have to also know where is this market indicating that it's not willing to do so. So if it's becoming a less likely scenario that the market you're in is going to be a runner, don't hold on to the trade just because you want it to become a runner. It's going to be telling you something all the time. It's either going to be a hold or it's probably time to take a large portion of the trade off in a partial and then still weigh it out. If you don't feel confident even after that, meaning you have to take a sizable amount of the trade off, I teach you how to take partials because you won't know how to do that initially, just like you won't know how to hold on to a trade for a large, big, profitable runner. That has to be something that you desensitize yourself by trusting all the factors that you're doing for higher time frame trading. If you're looking at a three minute, two minute, five minute, one minute chart, and you're trying to come to the conclusion that you're gonna hold for 100 handles, it's gonna be very, very difficult to do that without a higher time frame frame of reference. Like you have to know what it's potentially reaching for. And if you blend those types of things with something that's on a higher time frame that would be used for the purpose of liquidity or repricing to an inefficiency in price, fair value gap, something to that effect. Because until you see how it works and then you weigh it against what you've been trying to do and not being consistent with it, it's easier for you to say, you know what, I'm going to let go of what I thought I should be doing, and I see him doing this, so I'm going to try that. And when you take those partials off, which is the secret, that's the secret to holding big ass runners. You're not doing a full pull, okay? Nobody just walks out there and starts doing that. It takes time conditioning yourself. When the market is offering it to you on a silver platter, here's what it's likely to do. I'll get to those details in a second. You'll know when to capitalize on it. But the most important thing is know when not to do it. 
If you really want to be a Grand Slam home run trader and you want to hold these big runners, you have to do the research and see which one are you in. Are you in the right one? Are you in the one that's likely to give you the downside? That's when we're bearish, which one is more likely to go lower? The one that's failed to go higher when it's been going up. It's the laggard. And the one that's stronger when it's been going up, when it's time to go down, it's going to be reluctant to go down. And when there's warning signs that it's not cooperating with you and your trade idea, kill it. I'm not afraid of being wrong. That's what you want to start with. You want to be able to do that. That's a stage in your development. You have no idea what it feels like to have $3,500 per handle movement. Yeah, four ticks, $3,500. So these big runners, these big runs in the marketplace, they happen over time. So you have to know a higher time frame draw on liquidity. Where is it likely to go? You have to have intermarket relationships. And then where in the process of where it's likely to go, where can I take partials off? So that way it rewards me and gives me more courage to hold on. Because if it returns against me and goes for my stop loss that I may have trailed up too quickly and too fast, at least I've been paid. And it's soothing to have that experience when you're developing. But big runners, it, they come by partials and managing it that way. And then finding your sweet spot. That means how many contracts, how many lots as a Forex trade that you're gonna be able to hold. And then you let it go. What's the sweet spot? Over time, you're gonna take less off at your first partial and you'll leave more on towards the end of the terminus or, or the, where you think the price is gonna go. That larger portion, you'll reserve it for that. And then over time, you'll get to the point where you'll know where your first partial would have been in the past, but because you now feel confident about what you're doing, you'll take your first partial at where your second or third partial would be. And it would be a very small one, just a little token paying homage to how far you've grown as a trader. And when you get to a point where you've mastered your own model and key point, you've mastered yourself. Then you can start doing full pulls.